This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist with Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, all three U.S. indices rose on the week and for the month of July. The S&P 500 recorded its strongest monthly gain since November of 2020, clawing back some of their losses from a dismal first half. It was a good week and a great month, but all three indices still remain down so far in 2022. Now, after raising its benchmark interest rate by 75 basis points for a second straight meeting Wednesday, the Fed indicated that at some stage, it will likely ease off to gauge the effects of higher rates on the economy, leading some analysts to go out on a limb and predict this week's raise by the Fed will be the last for 2022. I hope so. Adding more fuel to the market fire were earnings. About 73% of S&P 500 companies that have reported quarterly results have beaten profit forecasts, calming the fears of many who feared earnings would begin to slide. But many investors still remain cautious about the outlook for the economy and for stocks. With inflation at 40-year highs, some central banks in the U.S. and elsewhere will remain in a hurry to raise rates, something the Fed rarely does in the face of a slowing economy, but may not have any choice. Since second quarter GDP showed the U.S. economy shrank for a second quarter in a row, at a negative nine-tenths of 1%, technically putting the economy in recession. Now, some like the White House argue that two negative GD prints in consecutive fashion is no longer defines a recession. Well, whether we're in a recession or not, the economy is definitely slowing. The bond market also had an up week with the yield of the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury down to 2.6% from its recent high yield of 3.5%. Now, yields move in the opposite direction of bond prices. And yields have been falling in recent weeks on expectations the Fed will soon slow the pace at which it's raising interest rates, especially as we see signs of inflationary pressures waning. West Texas crude fell 6.8% last month. Meanwhile, gold, silver, and copper for August delivery all fell for a fourth consecutive month, with copper dropping 24%. Now, the debate will continue, but for now, for July, risky assets had a good month. Even Bitcoin soared 27% for the cryptocurrency's best monthly performance since October. Meanwhile, the dollar continues to rise, posting its second consecutive monthly gain. I guess many of you are scratching your head and wondering, how's this all possible? Dual hikes from the Fed totaling 150 basis points, followed by two consecutive months of negative GDP, and the markets went up? Stocks move ahead of economic activity, and bear markets often precede recessions as stocks discount the likely decline in investment in corporate earnings. In any event, remember stocks are a leading economic indicator also. They can be volatile. As the economist Paul Samuelson once observed, the stock market has predicted nine of the last five recessions. But more often than not, the market will turn higher well before the GDP does. Hey, my son Ryan and I, we have 68 years of combined industry experience of building low-cost, tax-efficient, goal-based portfolios. For your free evaluation, all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. 